can just five, is a little bit stronger at five man. I know that and usually likes their late game security blanket, but at the same time. Land on Pile I Die, who else would it land on at the start of this game? Koro gonna jump forward, and that's gonna be the early, early first blood. So. And they. Yeah, well, actually, I guess some of those could be for Death Prophet, too, if she needs to catch up. Mm -hmm. Another dive. Sinking there, but. Pile dies here. Trying for the double, but he can't find it. Koro will get the kill. Still no points in Blur, so the tower will bring him down. AUI is going to be here as well. One more Arcane Bolt onto Big Daddy, or just an auto attack. This tri stack and fly on the top lane, or Simba is just not getting that much either. Less CS and Centaur. Yeah, only level four. Fata's he doesn't want to give up the lane, though. I mean, obviously, he could just walk into the jungle and start doing that. But we see Fada again in the middle lane in trouble. There's an Agent Seal out onto Kuro, but now he does have one point in Blair, so the 20% evasion able to take a couple more hits, or not take, rather. Uh, but AUI in trouble. The Stifling Dagger goes out, slows him down. The arrow to connect. Now Simba going to teleport in, and they'll get another kill. Now 6-2, to two. TP coming in. We'll see what he can do to make a difference. As the runes are up at six minutes, it's going to be a bounty up top. Secret have got that one. Pile I die, and the bottom lane picks up the invis. But Bone Seven, he actually did just take a death while we were uh, talking about the mid lane happenings, and he's back here again, very very low. There's that burrow we were talking about. But Bone Seven, he's going to go down again to the stomp. This time at least Puppy is going to fall. So it's a one for one trade thus far. Now they try to escape the danger. Oh, Pile I die and AUI coming together there. They'll bring down Simba, and then middle lane Feta. S4 in the bottom lane, maybe waiting for some of his allies to TP in. Nope, not waiting at all. He's just gonna go in, get the split off. There's no points in silence from Feta, so he can't stop it. And it's Brewmaster, 6.82C. That's a slower transformation now, so it's a little easier to cancel out. Some slight nerfs to the hero as they try to chase Bone7. Sifling Dagger gonna connect. No way to disjoin it because Bone7 is behind. No Blink Dagger. Pylai die now. Upper middle ground here on the Dire Jungle. And he's gonna go down Big Daddy with the spear. Yeah, well, 1v4 for now, but help's coming in, and there it is, the relocate, they're looking straight for Fada, he's gonna go down, Kuroki jumps over to AUI, AUI gonna go down, everyone, on Simba here, there's the slow, the stampede, everything to chase him, but they're wasting a lot of time, they have to go very deep for this, and they haven't even found the kill yet, Moonlight Shadow gonna keep him alive, the relocate in, and some other TPs, the Brewmaster Prime will split, the relocate two tower range without a few people behind him, so Secret's gonna devote a lot of resources to this. Alright, they're gonna go stampede in right onto S4. He's silent. Stop. Can they bring him down in time? Yes, they can. The Burrow Strike, the Mystic Flare, even threw in an epicenter onto that, and Sentry dropped proactively there by Puppy. We'll find Pilot Dive. That's it. Value. Remember when we were talking about his HP? He had like 815. Now he has like not. He's like got like 100, 100 more since uh, then. It's close to like one shot territory with Phantom Assassin, especially once she gets level 16. It's really dangerous times for all. Uh, for old Death Prophet. I hear both them stomping, and it's going to be actually on S4. The Ancient Seal is there, but the relocate comes in. They won't be able to save the Brewmaster, so he's going to fall. The Bone Seven is going to pay the price. Pilot Guy gets off his ultimate, but it's. Oh, it actually is a rank 2 ultimate. It's the Revenge on the Fanatic stack. But for now, it's Secret dominating this best of one. And already, this tier 3 tower, there's no fortify that was used a couple minutes ago at the tier 2. Going for pilot die, Kuroki gonna have to maybe retreat out of this. Bone 7 tries to jump on S4, gets nothing out of it. Kuroki jumping over there, still has the Aegis, and that Satanic will see- Oh, he decides to use it before dying, so he wants to stay in this for the long haul. Going for Feta again, he's got no HP. At 22 minutes of the game, you don't normally see a Death Prophet just die that quickly, but he has nothing. Big Daddy, the Wisp, will actually fall here. Pilot die making some plays here as Kuroki under the tier 4 towers with Moonlight Shadow, so that's not really helping out in this scenario. Big Daddy with the buyback will come back in, relocated. There's the Primal Split trying to deal with Eternal Envy. Won't be able to find him as he blinks out, but that's the range Rex already gone. Now they start to work on the melee and, well, no Fortify, so it's it's gonna fall. But the damage dealers are dead for four more seconds. Both have buyback, but they don't want to use it. They'd rather lose one lane of Rax. Highlight die. Looking for the epicenter. Finds two. It's going to be enough to kill Kuroki, but Aegis, he'll be back in just a couple seconds. They're going to S4. They're going to be able to bring him down. Now it's Kuroki versus the world. So probably just hit that building. I think Simba's going to take care of that. He's got it. AUI with the all chat. Kuroki just murdering. I feel like every time this guy plays PA, he's just walking around the enemy base murdering people. As, uh, Forced to blink back into Patrice Pilot Die with another good Burrow Strike stun, but it's all too little, too late for Pilot Die. They forced a buyback on AUI. Big Daddy. He had already bought back, and they won't even be able to bring him down. 
Bone Seven's gonna fall. There's another crit onto the buyback. Now looking for a pylite die. Yet again, another stun. Kuroki. No BKB. He's a man. He doesn't need it. 5.4k in the bank, and I think finally this base dive has uh no, maybe not finished. Kuroki's going in. That's not good. He's gonna get stunned up there. This is a big kill to give away. Founding found diving tries to pop the satanic. Not gonna be enough. And now Eternal Envy stuck in the tree line. We'll he doesn't have a TP Ooh. scroll though. When's he gonna be able to bring around? It's gonna be a chase. Oh, he stutter steps and walks straight into the arrow. Also, Kuroki. And okay, the Yule Scepter is the Cyclones. Everyone just spending some time in the sky. It's a good view from up there, I would think. As Feta comes down, he's greeted by an arrow from Puppy. And will die pretty much immediately afterwards. And they will find AUI. There's the Ghost Scepter. Let's see if, uh, okay, they'll kill the neutrals just in case. No mercy here from Kuroki. Oh, uh, yeah, that was, he, he blinked over to get closer, and that was maybe not the right move, because once again, the Aegis is going to be back over on the Phantom Assassin, who at this point is just terrifying. Another arrow to connect. Puppy's been on point on this Marana, starting in the early game, and that's enough right there to just force out the GG call here in this uh, best-of-one round-robin stage. And that was a change for some reason, this, like, insta-pause upon disconnect. Yeah, that was brutal. Very nice early game play from um, pretty much everyone on Secret. They just manhandled that profit, made her completely irrelevant, and just let EE farm and to, 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 to no avail. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he got a great Battle Fury timing, but, well, he got the Battle Fury, then they're like, okay, now we'll deal with you. They put a little pressure on him. Obviously, they didn't even kill him that many times, because there wasn't fantastic lockdown. PA never went for a battle.